Today I want to talk about Lead Code Problem 23. Given a bunch of sorted lists, we shall merge them into one sorted list and we can only scan these sorted lists from left to right. That's all we are allowed to do. Okay, maybe let's look at the output from the program first to understand how I solved it. So I put all the sorted lists into a Java util priority queue, which will automatically put the list with the smallest element first if we configure it correctly. Okay, so you can see the one uh, comes first. And then we <laughs> remove the one from the list. So the list is then only four or five. Then of course it's at the wrong place in the priority queue. So we remove it and put it back. Then we process this one, remove the entire list and put this remaining list back here. Then uh, we process the two, remove this list and then put the this list back, which we can see here and so on. That's the uh, basic idea and it works quite well. Okay, so let's look at the code. So our result is a good old Java array list um, in the process of building it. Our queue is a priority queue. And in order to determine how two linked lists um, shall be sorted relative, relative to one another, um, we pass a comparator. So given two linked lists, we simply peek at both of them and compare via smaller than. And curiously, every <laughs> closure function that takes two arguments is automatically an implementation of the comparator interface. Um, that was quite surprising to me. Okay, and then we add all mm, lists into the queue. But um, again, there may be empty lists, we have to mm, remove them. So here we remove them. Now, the empty list is gone. And then we map all those lists, which are vectors for now, into um, linked lists, because linked lists can be manipulated quite easily by removing the first element. Okay, right. And then all those linked lists are added to the queue. Then we have a loop without any bindings, which hints at this is a very imperative solution. We don't rebind anything. We print the queue to the terminal. That's why we saw this interesting lock here. And then we check if the queue is empty. If it is empty, we simply convert the array list into a vector. That will happen at the very end when the, um, when the list is completely empty, <laughs> when the priority queue is completely empty. Okay, otherwise we still have work to do. So what do we do here? Um, we remove the very first list from the queue. So that would be this list which that is completely removed. So now only these two lists are in the priority queue. And then we remove the first number from that list. That would be the one. So in this list, only four and five remain. <laughs> and of course, uh, now this list is at the wrong position. Uh, because four is not the smallest element. Um, but we already removed that list anyway. All we have to do is put it back. Uh, so we do that here. And that's what you see here in the code. So if the list is not empty, four and five is not empty, then we put it back into um, the priority queue. Okay, and then we recur back here to the loop target. Okay, yeah, and you can see all those mutations. So here, we mutate the queue, here we mutate the list, um, and here we mutate the queue again. And since we, and where's the result mutated here? And since we mutate everything, we don't um, need any loop bindings here. Okay, that's a perfectly fine solution, but I found it interesting to write a more um, functional solution. So let me comment this guy out and show you the more functional solution. That is this one that looks quite similar. Uh, the two string methods are not <laughs> produced, not quite as much output, but the basic idea is exactly the same. If you look here, one, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, you see exactly um, the same results. Okay, um, so what's then different here? Let's look at the code. So our result is no longer an array list. It's now a transient vector. That's just a more idiomatic enclosure. 
And our queue is now a priority map. You need uh, an additional dependency for that. That's uh, um, I, I didn't find a normal priority queue. I only found a priority map. Okay. Um, yeah, so here we also um, remove all the empty uh, lists. Maybe let's do that again. So here are all the lists, including the empty list. Then we remove the empty list and then we call map indexed vector. What does that do? That gives us the same lists um, paired with um, indices starting at 0, 0, 1, 2 and so on. These are basically completely arbitrary. I just need um, unique keys for that priority map. Okay, and then we turn these key value pairs into a um, priority map, which you can see here. And now um, here you can see that the one is at the very front and the two is at the very back. Right, then we have our print line that gave us the nice output above. Then again, we check if the queue is empty. If it is, we turn the transient vector into a persistent vector, which should be more efficient um, than turning an array list into a persistent vector. And then this peak queue, maybe let's scroll up again, peak queue won't mutate the queue. Peak queue will give us this key value pair basically. And then we just structure that here into the key, that would be the one and the x and x's, that would be the one, four, five. So x is one and four, uh, x is four, five. Okay, and to <laughs> remove that entry from the map, uh, uh, if you will, in air quotes, we call pop, but pop will give you a new map. It, will, it won't really mutate. So Q will still be the complete Q with the three entries and a pop Q will only have these entries. Okay, and then we simply rebind that here to the same name. So we simply forget about the old one, but it's still in memory. And then we recur and instead of recurring without any targets, now we have two targets. So the result is then conch result X. So the number one is conched onto the result. And since four, five is not nil or empty, we associate that back into the queue, which will give us another queue <laughs> where now the uh, four, five is um, associated to the key one. Yeah, so basically the same idea, but with functional updates instead of imperative in place updates. Yeah, so the transients are a performance optimization that is important for this, for these tight loops to create results efficiently. Okay, um, speaking of efficiency, um, here our remove empty sorted lists is a lazy sequence. And then map index vector of that is another lazy sequence. And we only need that lazy sequence to feed that to the inter function, right? And it would be nice if we could call into without producing these lazy sequences. And <laughs> the answer to killing lazy sequences is transducers, of course. So I built another version that uses transducers for the initialization of the map. Maybe let's look at that next. That would be here. Um, yeah, so here we start with remove empty, which gives us a transducer. Map indexed also gives us a transducer, so no elements are, are touched yet. The composition of those two transducers is also a transducer. And then we can call into with the transducer as the middle argument. So here above, we call into with two arguments. Here's the first argument. Here's the second argument, the lazy sequence. And here we call into with three arguments, the first argument, the second argument being the transducer and the third argument, our source list. Yeah, and you can see uh, here is the overload that we called first. In the um, second example here, that would be this one. And this intercall was here, right? And then it simply delegates to transduce with um, conch. So basically conch will be wrapped by our transducer. Yeah, and that, that also worked and it's just a little performance optimization. <laughs>